So now that we've added the zero product rule to our toolbox, uh, let's, let's see how we can use that. We're going to work over a bunch of examples here. Uh, there are a few kind of unusual situations that can come up that you need to be aware of. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll be covering those here, right? Make, make sure you've seen them before, before you start trying to do these on your own. So this is one of those kind of slightly unusual situations. The first thing that, that should jump out to you when you look at this is that it is not equal to zero, and it has to be. Zero is a special number. This product rule thing does not work if that, if that right-hand side of the equation is anything else. I see students, they'll try doing this. They'll try to say, well, okay, so either x equals 8 or x minus 2 equals 8. And let, you know, let, let's stop right there because it looks like we've got an answer here, right? Well, let's, let's check that, see what happens. The left-hand side becomes 8 times 8 minus 2. That's 8 times 6, which is 48, not 8. So it did not work, right? If, the, if this is equal to anything but 0, you, you've got some work to do first. So let me clean this up, get all this off of here, right? There we go. Let's go back to the beginning and try this again. First, I need to make it equal to 0. And I can do that easily enough. I'll subtract 8 from both sides. The equation becomes x times x minus 2 minus 8 equals 0. All right, well that, that's good. I mean, it, it solved the immediate problem. But this is still not a zero product rule situation. It is still uh, not a times b equals 0. All right, but look, I, I can fix this. Let's do this. Multiply out the left-hand side. This becomes x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling good about this. I'm pretty sure this thing factors. All right, so this will be x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. And yes, that is a zero product rule situation. Now, either x minus 4 equals 0 which gives me x equals 4, or x plus 2 equals 0, which gives me x equals minus 2. And there you go. I got two answers, right? just like we've seen happen in previous examples. So this one is similar to the previous one. Why don't you uh, pause the presentation, right? take a minute, see if you can't do this on your own, then start the slides back up, and we'll go over it together. All right, so the first thing that jumps out to me here is that this is not equal to zero, right? But I can fix that. Let's subtract six from both sides, and this becomes 2x squared plus x minus six equals zero. And I'm pretty sure this is going to factor. This is going to be 2x uh, minus 3x plus 2 equals zero. That's the zero product rule situation. Either 2x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. All right, so the second one is the easier of the two, right? Just subtract 2 from both sides, and there's one answer. And now let's see, over here, I'll add 3 to both sides and then divide both sides by 2. And once again, I get two answers, which is evidently a fairly common thing here. Okay, so so for this one, it's already equal to zero, which is great. The zero part of the zero product rule already taken care of. So we can move on to looking at that left-hand side and thinking, how can I factor that thing? And you remember from our, our factoring process, the first thing you look for is greatest common factors. And I think this thing has one. All three terms have an x in them. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor that out. This will become x times 3x squared plus 13x minus 10 equals 0. And now I think this, I think this polynomial, this quadratic part is going to factor. This will be 3x and I'm thinking plus 5 and minus 2 equals 0. Let's see, 15 minus 2. Yeah, that's 13. Good. Okay, now, there's a problem with what I just wrote. I, I left something out, and this is a really common mistake I see people make. They
they neglect this x that they factored out. Right? That x is a factor. It's important. Right? You, you can't lose track of it. I know you're kind of done with it. All you can do is copy it down every step from now on. Right? But it's still important, and here's why. Now I'm, I'm set up. I'm ready to use my zero product rule. So I'm going to set the, the factors equal to zero. x plus 5 is a factor. 3x minus 2 is a factor. And so is the x. Right? You can't lose track of that one because it's going to contribute an answer. Right, so this one here, this last one, gives me x equals negative 5. Let's see here, add 2 to both sides, divide both sides by 3, and we get three answers. Negative 5, 2 thirds, and 0. Okay, this, this is another one you got to be a little, a little prepared for. Um, it's already equal to 0, which is great. So I'm, I'm starting to think about factoring. And that thing on the left-hand side, it's the sum of two squares. That's binomial, then the specific type is the sum of two squares. And you remember from our previous lecture when we were talking about factoring binomials, the sum of two squares doesn't factor. All right, so based on what we know so far, based on the techniques we currently have in our toolbox, if you can't factor the polynomial, we can't proceed any further. So my solution to this, my, my answer to this would be, there are no solutions. That's what we're going to say for now. Right, we're going to look at some more advanced techniques in, in a little bit here. Um, but for now, my answer to this would be, if you can't factor it, there are no solutions. So this one, it has a little similarity to the previous one. Uh, this is, instead of being the sum of two squares, this is the difference of two squares. And that one we can factor. So let, let me rewrite it that way. This is n squared squared minus 4 squared. And you, you remember how difference, uh, difference of two squares factors. This is n squared plus 4 times n squared minus 4 equals 0. Now, again, I, I want you to think back to our procedure, our process, for factoring polynomials. The very last step was go back to the beginning and see if any of the individual factors can be factored further. All right, well, this n squared plus 4, this is the sum of two squares, just like on the last slide, and that's going nowhere. That doesn't factor further. The second one, 4, is 2 squared. So this is n squared minus 2 squared. And look, that one is, again, the difference of two squares. So I can factor this further. This is n squared plus 4 times n plus 2 times n minus 2 equals 0. All right, so three factors again. Set each factor, all three of them, equal to 0. And then I'll solve each of these little equations. The last one here, add 2 to both sides. We get n equals 2. The middle one, subtract 2 from both sides. We get n equals negative 2. And this one, we saw this one before. This is really the, almost the same as the last slide. This thing doesn't factor. And if I can't factor it based on what we know so far, I can't get any solutions from it. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean there are no solutions at all. All right, these two solutions that we found over here are perfectly valid. All right, so this equation does have two solutions. Those solutions are negative 2 and positive 2. All right, so the, this guy, the last one here, right, last more kind of slightly unusual case. Uh, it's already equal to 0, which is great. So let's see if it factors. I believe this will be n minus 3 times n minus 3 equals 0. All right, so we've, we, now that we've factored it, set the factors equal to 0 and solve these equations. The first one gives me n equals 3. And the second one gives me n equals 3. So they're duplicates, right? And, and that's okay, right? That, that's not a problem. It means that there is only one solution, n equals 3. Okay, that can happen. All right, so um, this is uh, the, kind of the end, the end of our, our explicit discussion of factoring and using it to solve polynomial equations. 
Um, there are some other techniques, right? some other methods for doing this that we need to add to our toolbox. Uh, and that's what we're going to continue working on in the following lectures.